So, I got the frame ready, nice and strong base for the bender. Um, I think it will work great. But um, yeah, I'm building the ultimate bender, so I want to uh, combine another type of bending machine. Um, I want to make a ring roller and make it inside this frame. It's strong enough for that, so um, yeah, let's build that. The steel is 100 mm by 40, 5 mm thick, and that's about the max that I can use on this uh, jet saw. One thing that I noticed with this uh, angle grinder uh, working like this, um, I can use the sanding disc a lot longer than using it by hand. Uh, don't know why, but uh, maybe less vibrations or so. But uh, yeah, this thing is on there for quite a while now and it's still good. And here I'm welding the trapezium thread, the nut to the frame for the adjustment of the roller and trying out some wave patterns with the TIG welding. And next we'll be making the threaded part for the mounting of the bearings. Next was machining the trapezium thread. It was not easy on the steady rest, but uh, yeah, it did work.
and I was using this cap nut and threaded it so far that it went until the end of the thread and then took off all the play uh, in between so that's my adjustment is just uh, threaded as far as it needed to be but not much further and here I'm squaring the end of the thread so I can use a normal wrench to uh, adjust it I'm using the bearings against the vise for the end stop and using the parallels to get it all squared up. And it can also work at parties. I needed to drill a lot of holes into the frame, uh, of course nice and square, uh, so I made this little jig to set up and uh, drilled the holes in this uh, scrap piece of tube and using that as a guide for the hand drill. These are the back plates for the guiding and I have the back plates welded and the front plate bolted so I can bolt them down uh, and fix them or I can loosen the bolts and then it's free to uh, slide up and down. These threaded parts will all be welded into the frame for the mounting of the bearings. And I said I didn't make any drawings. Well, this is it. Um, yeah, I cut the machine designed in my head and thinking uh, every evening about the next step uh, that I'm gonna build and how I'm gonna build it for the next day. So that is how I'm designing this machine. Uh, works for me because I also have to use the materials that I got and don't want to buy a lot of new stuff so that's why I have to build it with the things that I have and that won't work when you're drawing out and designing it all on computer but in the process sometimes you change a few things or adjust it 
um, I decided to weld tubes inside these uh, uh, bearing holders uh, because I hate open spaces inside frames because I won't be able to paint it and it will rust and I decided to um, mill and uh, mount these brass uh, guidings uh, because I didn't like the metal to metal contact to the frame so uh, yeah there's a few adjustments that I made during the process so the next step is making the rollers uh, I decided to go for tubing and welding these ends in the center, one in the center and two at the ends of the tube. And setting up the steady rest at center height close to the chuck and then moving it to the outside. A uh, great tip from uh, Joe Paczynski. Uh, if you haven't, then uh, check out his channel. It's really great for metalwork and machining. And you can see it's wobbling a little bit. I don't think it's a problem. But I did take off the ends. Uh, the tube was a welded tube, so there's always a little, uh, yeah, wobbling uh, that I took off on the lathe. And for the first test run of the roller, I made these rollers for 20 mm tubing. Um, the nice uh, thing in the design is that they all have this 20 mm uh, hole inside, so I can use it on the roller, but also on the bender themselves. So, uh, yeah, that saves me some time in making these roller. I'm drilling and tapping these holes for uh, set screws. I'm not using a keyway, I hope that's enough but uh, if not then I can always change it um, uh, I did grind a little point on the set screws so if I torque them a little harder I will still be able to get them out and I also drilled a little center holes on the uh, rod where it's uh, supposed to be fixed so not to damage the surface on there okay almost finished you can see I have the plate roller inside the frame I uh, can roll a 30 centimeters wide plate and a ring roller on the outside uh, here testing out with a 20 millimeter tube and a good opportunity to make a nice hand wheel uh, one thing about the design you can see the rollers are quite far apart from each other. Uh, on one way that's a good thing because that way I have more bending force uh, to bend something. But on the downside I have more waste at the ends because as you can see you cannot bend it until the end.
And in case you're wondering about the adjustment, um, I can adjust it from both sides, keeping it uh, as square as possible. But I don't really need to because these bearings are self-centering, so they can uh, pivot and rotate up and down. The only thing to keep in mind is that if they pivot a lot, then the distance from each bearing will change. So I only fixed the set screws on one side, the rolling side, uh, so it can move in and out the other on the other side. And if you have a bender, then yeah, you can make a little nicer design for a hand wheel. And to be sure that I rotate it uh, without getting my fingers stuck inside the frame, I welded this little knob uh, for easy rotating. And I decided to harden the rollers, uh, testing it out with a magnet if they're on the right temperature, and then dropping them then in linseed oil. Uh, makes them harder but also a little rust protection so that was it guys for part 3 uh, hope to see you next time in part 4 where I will be making a hydraulic bender